All right, so you've installed Proxmox. You started a container, threw Plex on it, uh, got yourself a little media library going on. You start telling your friends and family about it, invited them to it. Uh, at first, they just ignored it because, you know, people are scared of whatever technology, I guess. But eventually, they start using it, and after a while, multiple people are using it at the same time, and a few of them come back and say, hey, what's uh, what's going on with the Plex uh, server? Uh, I noticed uh, a lot of buffering going on, and it, it just kind of took forever just to watch a movie. Well, you check out the usage, you see what's going on, there's a lot of transcoding going on, which just takes your CPU usage and spikes it all the way up to 80, 100%, and there's just no headroom left. Well, if you're having that issue like I was, we're going to solve that next by taking something like this. This is a Quadro K620 video card. It's a, I don't know, it's a 10, 12 year old card. It's a pretty old card, but we're going to pass it through to that container and we're going to uh, set up the transcoding or the hardware encoding, I guess you would say, on Plex to utilize our graphics card instead of the CPU. Take care of that uh, buffering problem. Next on Low Res DIY. All right, so the Quadro K620, like I said, it's an older card. It's a uh, single slot, low profile card. And if you don't really realize how small this thing is here, let me show you something. This is my... Uh, EVGA RTX uh, 2060. And this is the K620. Quite a bit of difference. I guess I'll put it that way and get the mount out of your way. But in my hand, how about that? It's quite a bit of difference, you know. It's an older card. He said it's an older card, but for what we're going to do with it, it's it's perfectly capable. It's uh it's based off the Maxwell architecture. It has a base clock of uh, 1,058 megahertz, a boost clock up to 1,124. So still, it's not even hitting the base clocks of today's GPUs. Um, your memory only has two gigabytes of GD GDDR3. Uh, memory with a clock speed of 900 megahertz again this is an old card but perfectly capable of doing what uh, we want it to do it's a pci express uh, 2.0 by 16 and a max power of 45 watts we'll probably won't get to that but that that is the max power of it just figured i'd give you couple quick specs on this guy in case you're interested in one i'll leave a link to a website that shows the specs and i'll uh, if it's still available on ebay i bought this thing for i want to say it was 35 dollars off of ebay um if that seller still has some i'll throw the link up in the description also just in case you're interested in getting one no affiliation or anything like that i i just don't do that um so with that, let's jump into Proxmox and get this card passed through to, to a Plex container and uh, see what it can do. Okay, I have logged into my uh, test server here. It's a brand new uh, setup and everything. Well, I say brand new, but the parts are shit old, probably older than your kids are. But they still work, so we're using them as a uh, like a test bench or whatever. So first thing you're going to want to do is uh, we're going to want to update everything on our node so i'm gonna take this repository and we're gonna add the no subscription repository we're gonna go back to updates we're gonna refresh it all right that task is complete so now we're gonna actually do the upgrade and we're gonna let it run of course we're gonna agree with it One thing I want to point out to you is this line right down here. It says, uh, seem you, seems you installed a kernel update. Please consider rebooting. Go ahead and uh, just after you get done uh, updating your system, make sure you didn't have a kernel update. If you did, go ahead and reboot. I'm going to reboot right now. All right, so I'm back up and running. And with that done, let's get down 
to the brass tacks of it here. We're going to go to our node and we're going to the shell of our node. First thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to run a uname dash r. And what this does is it tells you what version of the kernel we're running. And actually it's updated since the last time I, I tested this. You know, obviously I test this stuff a little bit before I come on here and show you guys uh, how to do it. And with that, I want to make sure that all the updates are there for the kernel. And if I run this uh, Apache dash cache search PVE dash header command, it's going to show all of the uh, different versions of the, the uh, uh, kernel that are out there, all the updates that have went through. And we are on the 51319-6 PVE kernel. So uh, I want to update that. So the way we're going to do that, this guy right here, it's an apt install, install PVE-headers. And what we're going to want to put in there is the version that we are currently running. So I'm just going to highlight it. I'm going to right click. I'm going to copy it. We're going to get rid of all that up to the install part. Right click, paste, and we're going to hit enter. And it's just going to double check everything if there are, for some reason, when Proxmox put this out, which there you go, it's updating some information right there. So now I am sure that my kernel is up to date. And if you don't know what the kernel is, it's basically um, when your system starts up, it's the first group of commands that will tell your operating system like, hey, we've got this type of CPU, we've got this type of uh, video card, this type of RAM, and this, these, this is the parameters for them. So your CPU, or your, not your CPU, your operating system knows what equipment it has to it that's available to it and how it's set up. All right, next step is we're going to want to blacklist something. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to edit the blacklist file with the uh, nano uh, space forward slash etc forward slash modprobe dash dot d slash blacklist dot com. It's same file that we use when we did the GPU pass through to a virtual machine. And the drivers that we're going to want to blacklist are these guys right here. I don't know how you say that. Novuia, Novada, whatever. I, you know, again, Midwestern accent, I'd slaughter that doggone thing. But that is, those are the drivers that Proxmox utilizes for the video card. Well, we're going to replace those drivers with our new drivers for our Quadro card. So we don't want those drivers loading up at all. So add that line. We're going to go Control X, hit the Y for yes and enter and that will save that file we're going to want to update the initramifis file basically that's the the again back to the first line of stuff that's going on before the operating system really starts up and it's going to throw that additional stuff in there about blacklisting that driver so we'll hit enter and it's going to take a few minutes to uh make it happen you can see right there the the kernels being edited and everything. All right, now that that's complete, we're going to want to reboot the system again. So reboot. All right, next up, let's go ahead and install the drivers for the Quadro card. But first, we're going to have to install the dependencies that the driver file is going to need to install everything. We're going to do that with an apt install, and it's a build. Oh, my typing is horrible. Build uh, Essentials. And I'm sure I didn't spell something right. So let's see. Build. Uh, oh, not Essentials. Essential. Click Yes and let it run. Okay, now that that's complete, we actually need to download the drivers from the NVIDIA website which I've got it up right here. Now, I'll have, again, I'll have a link to this website in the descriptions, as well as a list of all of the, uh, uh, well, a list of the instructions. So uh, 
it's easier for you to find all this stuff. Now the website, what we're going to want to do is click on search. Well, let's go back there. You're going to want to fill in your information about your video card that you're using. So if you're not using the Quadro K620, you're going to need to adjust these options to your video card. You're going to do a search and then you can download it. But right here, it's going to tell you right there's the version, the release date. It's for Linux and everything. This is all stuff that I had uh, requested in the screen prior. Uh, if you want, you can go through and double check to make your car, make sure your card is listed in these drivers. I, I know the K620 is in these. And then you'll want to download the drivers. Well, you click download, that brings you to the actual download page. And what we want to do is we want to right click on it and we want to copy the link address. We'll go back to the shell of our node and we'll do a wget and then we'll right click and paste that address in hit enter and it's going to start downloading the file for us it'll take a couple minutes let's do an ls and there it is there's our file that we just downloaded right there now that we've got the file downloaded we need to make it an executable file and the way we're going to do that is with a chrome mod space plus x space capital n and if we hit tab it's going to actually fill the rest of it in for us we'll hit enter and that will now make that file an executable file next up we're going to run it with a dot forward slash capital n again we're going to hit tab and we're going to hit enter and it's going to start initializing it's going to uh start building the kernel module which is like i said it's what starts before really the os does to let it know that hey use these drivers guy all right and video installer was forced to guess where the x library path is all right cool okay uh install the nvidia 32-bit compatibility library sure all right, would you like to run the NVIDIA xconfig utility to automatically update your X configuration file so that the NVIDIA X driver will be used when you restart X? I'm not using X, so I, I think that just actually has to do with the user, with the, with the uh, graphics, as in if you're using the graphics for something uh, on a monitor or something. I'm not doing this. The system is headless. I'm just going to use it for transcoding. So I'm not going to install that. So no. And the installation of the NVIDIA Accelerated Graphics driver for Linux is now complete. We hit enter. All right. Everything is done and said over with. Well, let's check to make sure it's actually working. So NVIDIA dash SMI. We hit enter. And there we go. It is up and running. So we can see driver version uh, 510.54. Uh, CUDA version is right there, 11.6. We have no processes running right now. So I'm happy everything is up and running. But let's go ahead and we're going to make sure that the drivers load every time we restart the system with a server like this you're probably not restarting it very often but just in case let's go ahead and make sure and to do that we're going to edit edit this file right here nano space forward slash etc forward slash modules dash load dot d forward slash modules dot config and wow i could hear my midwestern accent again there with the slashes and everything we're going to hit enter we're going to tab down to the bottom and we are going to add all the files that are the NVIDIA drivers, the uh, NVIDIA, NVIDIA uh, mod set and the NVIDIA UVM control X. Yes, we want to save it and we're going to hit enter again. We're going to want to update the file and enter. All right, now, for some reason, when the installation process happens, it doesn't create certain um, device files that 
are required to run the NVIDIA card and pass it through to the config. So I got the this information from Wendell over at uh, Level 1 Tech, actually an article he wrote. I'll have a uh, link to that article in the description if you want to check it out. But we need to create this file right here. And it's a 70 a, a nvidia.rules file. I don't know what the 70 is for. Maybe that's the. Yeah, no idea. But that's what Wendell used. So I don't know if you know this or not, but he's very smart about this stuff. This is his life's work, basically. So we're just going to follow his example. We're going to hit enter and we're going to add these rules right here. There's three different rules. And what they're basically doing is it's saying when the driver, the NVIDIA driver or the mod set driver or the UVM driver are loaded, it's going to run a bash command, which is this file or that file or that file. And it's going to, it's going to set the permissions. My goodness, I was tongue tied there for these drivers. Uh, when it loads up just in case well like I said because for some reason the drivers when you install the drivers it didn't do that automatically for you so let's go control X yes enter and uh, control X yes enter save the file next up we're gonna want to reboot it again so let's go ahead and reboot the system Yeah, that's right. Gas prices have got me crushing silver bullets. I am proud. I like me some Coors Light here and there. Probably going to be drinking more of it here with the way it's going, but hey, to each their own. Okay, with the system rebooted, let's go ahead and make sure the driver's loaded properly. Yep, everything is up and running. We're good to go. We're happy with that. Oh, finally, we're at the point where we are going to uh, pass it through to the container. Now, new system, I haven't set the container up yet or anything, so I'm going to hop off screen real quick and set that up. We'll be right back. Actually, let's go through all the steps together. So there's no questions about what um, operating system I used or how many cores I used or anything like that. We're not going to waste a lot of time on this. We're just going to speed through it real quick. But we are going to create a container. 100 is fine. Let's call it Plex Test and give it a password. Actually, that's too complicated. I won't remember that. And let's do this one. Let's make sure we type it right. And sure, we're going to make it a privileged container. We're going to hit next. The only thing I've downloaded is Ubuntu 21.10. So we're going to use that as our operating system. Eight gigabytes of disk space is just fine. Let's go ahead and crank the CPUs up a little bit. Heck, this thing's got a whole six on it. So let's go ahead and with six to just try to speed stuff up. The 512 is fine. Well, here, let's give it two gig of RAM. We'll hit next. We'll make it DHCP. We'll hit next. DNS is fine. Confirm. And works for me. So you'll notice I didn't hit the uh, start after creation because we got a little bit of uh, editing we need to do before we start up the container. So there it is. The container is created. But actually what we need to do first is we need to edit let me look at my notes here. We need to edit the configuration file for that container. So nano space forward slash etc forward slash mpve slash lxc slash config. And it says ID. We're going to give it the ID number of our new container of 100. And we're going to hit enter. So we're going to scroll down. And we've got a bunch of of information to copy and paste in so we're going to copy and we're going to paste some stuff in here okay so we're looking at a lot of different stuff here this first section right here all of this their numbers 
the numbers here correspond to the files that are down here. And what I mean by that is, uh, we'll use phone numbers as an example. Let's see, say you uh, want to call your buddy Chris or some, something like that. You need the phone number to get a hold of him. Well, that's basically what these numbers up here are. Like 1950, uh, that is actually like the phone number for this file right here, the NVIDIA.0 uh, file. So keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and clear this guy out. And these are the phone numbers for these files that correspond to the card and drivers that I have installed. Yours may be different. They may be different numbers and files. So I want to save this. And uh, I want to save this guy. Where did I get these phone numbers from and the files from? So if we do an ls space dash l space uh, forward slash dev forward slash nv and we're going to use star so star just any file that starts with nv in that directory in the dev directory will be listed here and we'll hit enter and if you look right here we have there's your two numbers right there that correspond to this file so if you look below it there's two more numbers that correspond to that file so if we go back to our config file you'll see those numbers these numbers corresponding to these files are the same as when we ran the ls command like i said now yours may be different so you may need to adjust this this is not a simple copy and paste for every single video card out there you might actually have to do a, a little research a little hunting for this stuff but Typically, when you do that ls command, it will, uh, no, son of a gun. When you do that ls command, it will give you the uh, telephone numbers that you need. All right, now that that is finished, we are going to go ahead. We're going to start up our new container. All right, let's go ahead and log into it. As always, let's do an apt update and and app upgrade dash y. All right, so we've updated everything. We passed the video card through, right? Well, let's do an NVIDIA dash, uh, what is SMT? SMI. And there's nothing there, okay? It knows how to get to the video card but it doesn't know how to utilize the video card when i did the nvidia smi it gave you a list of all the drivers that uh are available for different nvidia cards so we know that when we went to nvidia and checked our video card it was the 510.54 drivers that we used so what we need to do is we need to install those drivers or download those in drivers install them in the container and exactly like we did in the shell for the node uh well not exactly let's just go ahead and do it and we'll see so we'll right click copy link back to our container and we're going to do a wget we're going to paste that in Next up, we're going to go ahead and run it with the uh, dot slash capital N tab. And we're going to add the extension dash dash no dash kernel dash module. And what we're doing is um, the container doesn't have a kernel. It uses the kernel from the base operating system. In this case, it's Proxmox Debian. And we're telling it that, hey, ignore the kernel part. Don't build a kernel uh, stuff for it or anything like that. Just install everything else. So we'll hit 
enter, let it go through. All right, now this is up. It's just telling you you specified no kernel, which we're good with that. NVIDIA installer was forced to guess again where the X library is. That's cool, whatever. Install the NVIDIA 32-bit compatibility library. Cool, let's do that. Again, I'm not in utilizing X, so we're not going to install that. And the inst and the uh, drivers are installed now. So next up, let's go ahead and do a reboot for good measure. Log back in. And let's do an NVIDIA dash SMI. Bam, there you go. Drivers are installed, it's up and running, the container knows it's there, everything is passed through, we're, we're happy. Uh, I haven't installed Plex on this yet, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick off camera. If you don't know how to install Plex, check out this video right here, it'll run you through how to quickly do that, but we'll be right back. And we are back with a video of our hero queued up here. So if we press play here, I've got it muted so you're not going to hear it, uh, and we're going to minimize that guy if we go to our dashboard and if we look right here it says direct play on it which means it's playing it directly if we scroll down our cpu not getting hit too bad or anything like that but if we go back to our video and it's someone else is viewing it and their equipment is say not as good as yours or whatever and they need to transcode it down to like let's say 720p so all of a sudden the video stopped it'll start back up here and we still see right there that it says a uh, direct stream and everything well if we scroll down it will notice that our cpu spiked up it went down if we let it play for a while it'll go up and down up and down up and down because it's having to figure out how to transcode from the 1080p or the 4k or the whatever back down to 720p so that's the whole reason we added this gpu in there because uh you know you get two three four five people doing that stuff that cpu is going to be pegged out all the time so if we stop that the way that we go ahead and and get uh hardware acceleration working well one thing is if you're doing it on plex you need a plex pass which i got a lifetime membership so that's no big deal for me but if you don't you'll have to subscribe and and get a plex pass or if you don't want to do that you can get something like jellyfin or mb that doesn't cost you anything to utilize transcoding and use those instead but for plex we'll scroll all the way down here to transcoding and we scroll down to this option right here where it says use uh, acceleration when available we'll click it we'll hit save we'll go back to plex and start our movie from the beginning again with our hero here and we will go ahead and we'll change it back to that 720 we'll minimize this guy we'll go to our dashboard right here give it a few seconds and that that right there that is what you call the look of disappointment and this may so let's go back we'll press play oh did you see that the big sigh you know up here i was saying motherfucker motherfucker but i did a little looking back into it to see what happened you remember way back when when i was talking about the phone numbers and how they correspond to each file and you need the right phone number to get a hold of that file yeah i went back i checked it same video card same machine as what i used before in my testing and the phone number changed on a couple of those files so throwing it out there i'm not going to skip ahead and say everything was 
perfect and I got everything right all the time because I definitely don't. Nobody does. But seriously, check those numbers out. Get them right. And when you do, well, let's do a and go back to showing you after I change those fun phone numbers. All right. Phone numbers are changed. Let's go ahead and change this over to the 720 like we tried to do ori originally we go back let's go to our desktop we can see it still says direct play nothing much going on on the cpu give it a few seconds let it go ahead and catch up and that right there that's what i wanted to see before it said transcoding hw when it said just transcoding that meant the cpu was transcoding for you which we don't that's not why we made this video we want the graphics card to do the transcoding so there you go hardware transcoding is working graphic or the cpu hasn't done anything not a blip everything is hunky dory with that thing if we go back into our container and we do an nvidia dash smi all of a sudden down here at the bottom right there we have one program running or one instant running whatever you want to call it sorry my phone started buzzing there and that is the transcoding of the video that we were watching so takes a little while to get there you got to make sure you cross your i's and dot your t's get everything working but it will eventually work all right it took a little effort to get there a little mistake along the way but we got it figured out everybody's happy my mother-in-law she can watch golden girls now and not have to worry about it buffering and i could sit downstairs and throw sanford and sun on for hours and not have a problem with it so hopefully you get the same outcome that i got and uh it works out for you and everything just remember follow everything step by step the instructions will be in the description the link to the nvidia driver page will be down there the link to windows article will be down there and i'm going to throw a link down there that will tell you how many trans codes your video card is capable of because although my card is a quadro it's an old one so it's stuck with the same limit of just three trans codes it's the more expensive ones uh that uh, and when i say more expensive you're you're in the three four five hundred dollar range for a used one that will do the unlimited trans codes but from what i understand there is a way to bypass that and i'm going to look into it and if i get it uh ironed out and think i can get some easy instructions down on how to do it i'll make that video next so if that interests you do me a favor reach down and karate chop the like button and a roundhouse kick the subscribe button and We'll catch you later.